for the Arizona State Sun Devils has been the return of quarterback Ryan Keeley to practice. We just found this out. Jeff Cron will start tonight, but Ryan Keeley will play probably the third or the fourth series of the game. Bruce Snyder's going to treat this almost like an NFL preseason game. The two quarterbacks will go back and forth, alternating series at quarterback. So good news, Ryan Keeley is back. One thing we don't talk about with Ryan Keeley, his return tonight. Still question mark about that torn ACL he suffered the last time he played almost 10 months ago. Guys, it should be a good one. Back up to you. All right, thanks, Mark. Doug, as we wait the kickoff here for Mike Barth, one question that I'll have, and we'll get you to expand on this a little bit, is what it will be like for Keeley to see teams going at game speed for the first time. He's only practiced three times in the last 10 months. Emmett White is going to start out of the end zone with the kickoff, and then, as you see, he will take a knee, and we'll check out the Utah State offense. The first start of his career for Jose Fuentes at quarterback. These are the numbers that he rang up in a reliever's role last two weeks ago against Southern Utah. Their tackles weigh, stand in at 6'9 and 6'10. You can't miss them. And the running back, White, is a good one. And we figure that they will attempt with a single back set tonight a lot of the time to establish the running game. First and 10, Utah State in White at their own 20. White will get him about three, as Adam Archuleta, a name that we will mention quite often on this Arizona State defense, will make his first stop of the night. The defensive line for Arizona State, Tommy Townsend at tackle is gimpy on a little bit of an iffy ankle. Archuleta anchors a good linebacker crew, and we talked about the two corners, Eason and Williams, in the pregame show. They have been just a little short of spectacular through the first two games of the season. There you see Adam Archuleta as he directs this defense, and Utah State now taking a little bit of a page out of the Colorado State book, trying to show a few formations. Fuentes can't quite get it to his wide receiver, and that's Marshall Sanders or rather Aaron Jones, and Alfred Williams was over there on the defense, and Doug, he was under some pressure right away. Yeah, he certainly was, and they were expecting this early and often because the Arizona State defense has shown this, especially the first two games of this year, but you can see the tremendous job by Bates avoiding the block, but it's those corners that have made this defense work. They have great coverage, and they make sure that the balls usually fall incomplete. Although it appeared that Aaron Jones did have maybe a step or two, but that great pressure prevented Fuentes from getting the ball to him. Third down, six at the 24. And whistles will stop play here as Utah State, with Fuentes standing there looking to the sidelines, trying to get a play called in, is late now Utah getting the play State called. Call timeout before the time expired. Timeout number one. And so they spend a timeout and will not be penalized. And I think in this situation, you're better off taking the five-yard penalty than blowing a timeout in the first minute of the game. And I would agree. When you look at Fuentes, he only threw 11 passes for the entire 1999 seasons. But their coaching staff really likes the way he handles the offense. And I think being a quarterback is so much about being back in a huddle and having the rest of your offensive players play better as a result of you being in the game. McDenahy marking the fastest time since 1973 that a coach has won its 1-1 one, one game in his first two at Utah State. Overall, his record is 50 and 26. He is now in his eighth season. Won the, uh, lost the opener, won the second game. Third down and six, White the running back as they line up with a tailback, Stallworth in the I formation at full, takes the pass over the middle. Look at him break tackles all the way out across the 45 and a first down for Utah State. They were again anticipating pressure and, and when you're anticipating pressure in passing situations, the best route to go to is the quick slant. They had, they've had plenty of opportunity to see Arizona State in the first two weeks, but you'll see Fuentes, he, what basically we thought was going to be a three-step drop, actually took it back five steps that time, but quickly delivered the football, and when you're down in the secondary, you have to make tackles. You just have to not necessarily kill the receiver, but you've got to make the tackle, and you can see Fuentes, so much of this game is about confidence. Mac Tier Clay finally brought Stallworth down, and it's first and 10 at the 46, pressure again. 
And Fuentes has to throw it away, and he just barely got away a forward pass. That one, again, about a yard away from being a lateral. Great pressure, Doug. When you watch this, this team on film, they love their right-handed. In other words, they run their running plays to the right-hand side as well as their screens. That time, not only did they have pressure on Fuentes, but you see Archuleta over there. There was no way that that play was going to be successful. Arizona State's defense going into tonight, they knew that this team was going to run quick screens trying to offset that awesome rush. Kurt Wallen with some good pressure right there. Now it is second down and 10. Emmett White can't get loose as he gets grabbed around the ankles by Solomon Bates and turns it into about a three-yard gain. White came into the ball game averaging 5.6 yards per carry. I bet he doesn't get that tonight. Now he's pretty impressive. And what I like about this kid is when he makes contact with defenders downfield, the pile goes his way. In other words, you don't see him getting pushed back. He runs with a lot of determination, and he's got tremendous peripheral vision once he gets the ball in the backfield to find that open hole. Utah State is just slightly under 30% on third downs this year. They've completed eight of 27. They've got one tonight. It is third and seven at the 49. Fuentes with some time to throw. Nice play defensively over there by Nigel Eason. And it's fourth down. It's been rumored there's been a number of professional scouts here at Sun Devil Stadium watching Easton over the last couple weeks. And it's because of plays like this. Look at his recognition of the ball. Instead of just not turning his head, he realizes where the ball is at, puts himself in a position, actually goes up and makes an attempt. And a lot of times, it's not about intercepting the ball. It's making sure that the offensive receiver has no chance to make the reception. That's the eighth pass deflection of the season for Nigel Easton. Steve Mullins, the putter, not too high on this one. Fielded inside the 15. And McDonald returns it across the 20, and he's out of bounds right around the 25. We have 12.35 left to play in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing here at Sun Devil Stadium. Looking for a great way to transport your valuables? Chevy Blazer. It has more passenger room than Jeep Cherokee and more standard horsepower than Ford Explorer XLS or XLT. Plus, $2,500 cash back makes a true sense of security affordable. Chevy Blazer. See your local Chevy dealer today. It's time for another SRP energy saving solution. While it may be tempting to close off air vents and unused areas of your home, it's actually something to be avoided. Hey! Never close off AC to more than 10% of your total space. Closing off air vents increases air pressure and reduces the effectiveness of your cooling system. What was that? Some kind of weather forecast? Just leave those AC vents open. Gotcha! For more great energy-saving tips, visit our website or call for a free brochure. What if you could be far away? and still be close to everyone and everything that's important to you. If you could talk to anyone in your family the instant you thought about them. If you could have the information you need come to you when you wanted it. And you had the power to make all the pieces of your life come together more than you ever imagined. Welcome to the future. Wireless from AT&T. Your world, close at hand. Arizona State football is brought to you by your Arizona Dodge dealers. In a perfect world, everything would be different. And by SRP. Thanks to you, SRP ranked highest in customer satisfaction. Quarterback is the lofted high enough over top of the defender, and Williams does the rest. Tony Walker is the man that got over there and tried to make the defense on that play. And Richard Williams has scored his sixth career touchdown, his first of the year. That is the longest play from scrimmage for Arizona State in this young season. Mike Barth misses the extra point. And with 11 minutes and 51 seconds left to play here in the first quarter, you see the reaction from Jeff Cron. He will not relinquish that starting quarterback position gracefully. Casinos, home to Arizona's hottest gaming action.
Arizona's largest poker room at Wild Horse Pass still has this 2000 Mustang GT to give away. Entering is easy and free. Expect the best from the river. Gila River Casinos. Sometimes the final moments make for the biggest games. Like during the Chrysler 2000 Final Clearance. Take advantage of our biggest cash allowances of the year on new 2000 models. Choose up to a $3,000 cash allowance on Chrysler minivans. Or choose a $1,000 cash allowance plus less than 1% financing. That's 0.9 APR and $1,000 cash. So hurry to the Chrysler 2000 Final Clearance. Because when the bell rings on October 2nd, it's all over. When I go to Whataburger, I usually order the taquitos. I like my taquitos with eggs con papas, like my abuelita, my grandma used to make any time in the morning. <laughs> Choose from any of our three original taquitos or try our brand new chorizo taquito. Each are just 99 cents for a limited time. I can't wait to try it. I can probably eat three or four of them. Any taquito, just 99 cents. Normally, I just order two. By the time I get to work, I'm ready to go. Whataburger, real food, real fresh for real folks since 1950. Arizona State drawing first blood thanks to Richard Williams, and he and the rest of that offense have answered the challenge. Bruce Snyder agreed with us when we said this team needs to make some big plays, and they certainly did there. He's 2-0 and as a starting quarterback. I know we need bigger plays. I know as we look, not only Utah State, but on down the road, for us to be a challenging football team this season, we need more points. That's a major challenge to our staff and to the players. They got to step up and start making bigger plays. Mike Barth to kick off to Tony Walker and Emmett White. White at the eight. Walker in front. White's knocked down at the 27. Walker is the man. Beaten by Richard Williams on that touchdown pass. Craig Coons on the tackle on the return for Arizona State. Takes him 44 seconds to get on the board tonight. I'd say he had a big play. This team is so different from a personality standpoint than last year's squad. When you watch this team warm up and come out at the beginning of the game, they have a sense of urgency that was not present last year. They just seemed like they were just kind of going through the motions early on until they got into the rhythm of the game. Aggies will flip-flop a few folks, and they will actually go now with a real fullback out there for the first time tonight. Blocking for Emmett White, but off the play action, you see the pass completed out to the right side to Casey Papinga, the tight end, his third reception. Nigel Eason brings him down on an 11-yard pickup and a Utah State first down. Every offense loves to run this play, and they try to influence the weak side linebacker. You'll see Adam Archuleta come in at the very middle of the screen, running into Solomon Bates. I think Archuleta actually got caught up on the play action on that time, and Fuentes did a nice job faking the handoff and delivering the pass. Sometimes you can get a little too aggressive on defense, and a good screen passing team will take you out of it. Look at this on the end around. And another first down. White lined up as a wing back and took the handoff. Kenny Williams makes the stop, and Utah State is across the 50-yard line. Three things you do against an aggressive defense. Misdirection, this is one of those plays right here where they actually give the ball to a White with a running start, getting an opportunity to get around the corner. Plus, he gives great effort downfield breaking tackles. But we've seen him run screens, expect some draws later on also. This team has scored a lot of points, averaging just 277 yards a game in total offense. White is knocked down for a loss on the Utah State side of the 50 by Eric Fields. The type of defense that the Sun Devils run, it's a run-gap defense. In other words, every single gap is filled by a defender. There's nowhere to go. And that time, Fields come in, comes in, not only makes the tackle, but he also the field defeats a block in the backfield. Look, at, look how he just overpowers the blocker in that situation to be in a position to make the tackle on White. Patrick Wilson is also in there. Replacing uh, the injured Willie Daniel tonight. There's that 
swing pass out into the flat to the right side that time to White, and he can't hold it. And if he catches that, it's another first down. Right. You know, one of the things I talked about was misdirection. When you're trying to offset, you'll see that the offense starts to the right-hand side, but they, they eventually end up, Fuentes fakes the handoff and rolls back to the left side of the screen. And this is the same play, very similar that they ran earlier in the game to the tight end, though. This time, White just was unable to hold on to the ball. Three wide receivers and a tight end now for Utah State. Fuentes on third down to throw. The first sack of the night for Arizona State belongs to Terrell Suggs. It's hard to believe that this kid is a freshman. The manner and the composure that he has out on the field. And it wasn't just Suggs coming from the right side of the screen. You'll see on the inside, Fuentes had nowhere to go. He was going to try to step up, but he had to stay where he was at, allowing Suggs to come from the outside. And it's his ability as a former running back in high school that allowed him to get around that end so fast. Fourth sack of the year for Suggs as Mullins nails one. Fielded inside the five-yard line and falling down in the end zone after he makes the play is Sean McDonald. Fielded the ball on the field of play, falls down in the end zone. And they're going to rule him down on the one. And that's where Arizona State will start. Well, I tell you, if you want a big play, here's a good place to start, right? My, oh, my. This was a mental error by McDonald. He should not have backed up and tried to make this catch. The, the rule, rule is put your heels on the 10-yard line and don't go any deeper. You'll see him backing up here trying to make this catch. He has to realize where he's at on the field. It was fortunate that this did not result in a safety, but instead the ball being brought out to the one-yard line. First and 99 for Arizona State. And the Sun Devils are going to get penalized about nine inches right here as they get a false start called against them. Arizona State has only lost at home in this series once. Bruce Snyder coached against half. Arizona Dead State ball. here in 1979. On the offense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. And his team got beat, and he said he was watching that Mark Malone play. Malone went by him about three yards from him <laughs> on the sideline. He said he could have reached out and tripped him, but he didn't. He should have. Yeah, there, there's been some guys done that before. They have done that. Mike Williams, a tailback for the Sun Devils. First and ten and a half. Williams just got out of the end zone. Williams carries. Jamar Glasper, the strong safety on the tackle for Utah State. You know, part of Todd Heap is he's a complete player. We're going to get a chance to see him engage the defensive end on the outside. And although he wasn't able to actually knock the, the defender down, he at least allowed a little bit of a lane to the inside, the running lane. Second down, about eight and a half. Devils go with two tight ends. Not much there again for Williams. He gets close to the five. Utah State gives up 187 yards a game rushing. Cade Smith, the Mike linebacker, on the stop. You just talked about that series with regard to Utah State, Tom. I so wonder who put together the schedule for 2000. It's almost like reviving some of these old rivalries. Colorado State last week, which the Arizona State Sun Devils haven't played for a long time, and now Utah State. Arizona State, a 25% third down team. And you know, Utah State, Doug, is not going to be in the Big West after this year. That conference is disbanded. Braun throws one badly behind Heap. And the Sun Devils now will have to punt. Jamar Glasper was defending on the play. Nick Murphy, who last week hit a 61-yarder, is going to get a short snap here. That's surprising. Usually in those situations, Todd Heap normally isn't the person that makes the wrong route. That time he went to the inside, and, and for some reason, Cron thought that he was going to actually go down the field, just stop and turn around. But both of those patterns were open had the ball been delivered a little bit more accurately, whether it was the receiver's fault or the quarterback's fault. I'm sure that Bruce Snyder is asking that question on the sideline right now. Emmett White stands on the 50-yard line for Murphy's punt. You make a good point there, too. I said Cron threw the ball badly. He may have thrown it right where he wanted to. The receiver may not have been there. Flags before the ball is snapped. And Murphy gets his hat taken off. And a few folks are dancing around looking like they might want to put their mouthpieces in and have a couple of gloves put on them and tie some ropes around them and let them <laughs> go at it here. Well, they say the average fight in NCAA college football occurs once every 28 games. We may be seeing one of those situations tonight. 
But in that situation, we heard the, the whistle being blown clear up in the press box before contact was ever made. So obviously one of the defenders from Utah State just continued on his route and just hit Murphy right in the chest. Well, and in defense of the Utah State player, he also blocked the punt, even though the whistles had been blowing, and Murphy went ahead and kicked it. So you have a dilemma here now if you're the official. And many times officials will regard kickers, much like quarterbacks, that they are in defenseless positions, especially a punter waiting for the snap of the ball. Here's Chuck McFerrin. The player contact against the kicker is excused because the kicker was going through his kicking motion. The whistle was blown. Dead ball. False start on the offense. You want to hear what it sounds like when a punter gets nailed? Listen. That's a helmet rattler. Oh, my. You ever hit, get hit like that, Doug, or you ever hit somebody like yeah, that? Yeah, usually I was on the other end. I never had my helmet knocked off. You knock anybody else's off. <laughs> yeah. I always made sure I had at least two chin straps on at all times. Murphy now with an even shorter snap than before. Let's see if the Aggies come after him again. White at the 40. Another flag comes into the pile as the tackle is made, and Utah State may surrender some field position here. They have excellent field position as we speak at the 37-yard line of Arizona State. Block in the back by the Aggies is going to cost them 10 yards from the end of the play. Unfortunately, too many times you see flags at special teams, and it goes back to the safety of the players. They eliminated hitting below the waist a number of years ago, but what that has resulted in is a lot of players pushing each other in the backs because they're not in a position to make the During block. During the kick, illegal block in the back on the kicking team. That ball will be marked from the post scrimmage kick spot, 10 yard penalty, first down. So that'll move it out to the 47, I believe. The penalty flag was thrown down at the 27. The play ended on the 37, and they're finally going to spot. Now they're going to, ooh, I think they, uh, they, they've gone five yards too far. They've actually gone they put the ball back on the uh, Utah State 48. That's a 15-yard penalty. But there's no uh, beef from the sidelines at Utah State. Emmett White at running back. Aggies go to work again offensively, trailing six to nothing. Another flag. White's got some running room and out of bounds near the first down stick, pushed out by Alfred Williams. Utah State, they like this two tight end set. The reason being is it puts another blocker on the line of scrimmage. And if they're passing, it's a very long corner for the defense to come off of before you get the quarterback. So I would anticipate looking at a lot of this two end, two tight end set tonight for Utah State. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Offsides defense, that penalty is declined. Now, where they spot the football is important here as to whether or not the Aggies have a first down or a second down because White went out of bounds right at the stick. There he goes again, Doug. Breaks a nice tackle there, too. Did a great job of taking it up to the inside, and then once he realized that the entire defense was condensed in the inside of the field, broke it to the outside. And there's a reason why White has been so successful. It's not just because of luck. This kid runs with a lot of determination. Adam Archuleta was the man that had even let him go. The Aggies with their deepest penetration to the Arizona State 42. Quick drop for Fuentes, and he had it in the hands of Aaron Jones, and he couldn't hold on. I talked about the three-step drop, and, and their coach knew that they have a successful passing game tonight. You'll see their quarterback, three steps, boom. That ball has to be released because pressure is coming. And about the only route that you could throw with a three-step drop is a quick slant pattern. You'll see even with that three-step drop, Fuentes is still roughed up back in the pocket. Yeah, there's about four of them up there and right in his face and knocking him down just as the ball leaves. That ball was a little bit behind Jones, but a pass that the wide receiver should have caught. Second and 10 at the Arizona State 42. Over the middle again. And first down yardage and more. This time it's Chris Stallworth 
Nitrell Eason makes the tackle. Stallworth is the nephew of the NFL great John Stallworth. Yeah, and Stallworth does a nice job. I talked about running inside routes. When you're running pressure defenses, your receivers must run to the inside. You'll see Stallworth actually come underneath that time, and they like this kid because he's big. He's six foot three, 200 pounds. And he's a mismatch against most defensive backs. Stallworth and Jones both go out wide to the right, and Utah State lines up in a shotgun for the first time to try to avoid that rush. Wide open at the 20 is Jones, and he's down to the 16. Now, let's talk about the shotgun, and how does this negate the rush? Well, what it does is it forces the defense to have to run further back to the quarterback, and it also gives the quarterback more opportunity to find receivers downfield. That play is going to be rubbed out because of an illegal motion foul against Utah State. We don't see it on the replay because it happens at the snap. But look at how wide open Jones gets. And, and really, I think that's respect. Illegal shift on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Now you see the illegal shift because the left uh, guard, I don't think, ever got down in the three-point stance. No, you talk about their tackles. Their tackles are the tallest players they've ever had in, on the football team at this university. 6'9 on one side, 6'10 on the other. When you're that tall, it's hard to get down and put your hand on the ground. And many times what these tackles will do is they simply go down in a two-point stance, which means they rest their elbows on their knees. But when you've got somebody else moving in the backfield, they can call you for that motion. Fuentes fumbles the snap. And Utah State right now becoming a little bit mistake prone as they have an opportunity to take the lead here midway through the first quarter. Anytime you start making changes at the quarterback, which is what this team has done, Crosby, their previous quarterback, was ineffective and got injured. They put Fuentes in. You take for granted the snap between the center and the quarterback, but I can assure you that it's something that has to be worked on, executed, and you have to do it repetition over and over again. And, and with Fuentes only taking so many snaps thus far this season, I'm sure that that's going to continue to be a problem until he gets more repetitions. His percentage down a bit from last week when he was 10 of 13, as you see right there. With time to throw, and again, they like that little stuff over the middle. And Jones gets him back in the middle of the field. Kenny Williams hauls him down, well short of the first down. Well, Aaron Jones, this is, this is the 12th game now that he's consecutively been able to make a catch. But this kid, he turns short plays into big plays. Last week against Southern Utah, what looked to be a very normal 10-yard pass, he managed to elude three or four defenders and take it almost 60 yards for a touchdown. This kid's very talented. As I said, he's went to high school at Casa Grande, and uh, he, he's one I'm sure Arizona State wish would have stayed here in, in the Maricopa County area. Flint is again in trouble, but gets rid of it to the tight end. That is J.R. Sugaturoga, and Adam Archuleta brings him down on the 20-yard line. The ball will be lined up on the hash mark right, and we'll see whether or not they bring Brad Vaughn in for a field goal try. This is the second week in a row now that a quarterback has put the ball on the ground and still been able to make a completion. You can see the extreme pressure he was under back in the pocket. And credit Archuleta with getting over there and making a fine tackle before he went out of bounds. And once again, Terrell Suggs right in Fuentes' face as he juggles the snap and then manages to get the ball away. This will be a 38-yard field goal for Brad Bond. His career best is 55. I see a little blood on Fuentes' shot yeah. right there as we got the shot at him from the sideline. Bond has hit the field goal, and Utah State has scored at the 442 mark of the first quarter. So the Aggies, on a short punt from Arizona State, converted into three, and they trail by three in the first period here at Sun Devil Stadium. And that makes the count one. Sullivan falls behind again to the batter. There's a base hit up the middle. Grandpa is not going to be happy about this. 
It's the Push Pull or Tow event from Ugly Duckling. Bring us any car in any condition and get $1,000 off your next car. Problem credit? Not a problem. Ugly Duckling, because life sucks without a car. When I go to Whataburger, I usually order the taquitos. I like my taquitos with eggs con papas, like my abuelita, my grandma used to make any time in the morning. <laughs> Choose from any of our three original taquitos or try our brand new chorizo taquito. Each are just 99 cents for a limited time. I can't wait to try it. I can probably eat three or four of them. Any taquito, just 99 cents. Normally, I just order two. By the time I get to work, I'm ready to go. Whataburger, real food, real fresh for real folks since 1950. Welcome back. ASU football is proud to announce Military Day, Saturday, October 7th, when the Sun Devils take on the California Golden Bears in Sun Devil Stadium. Military personnel can purchase up to four tickets at $10 each with a military ID. Call or stop by the Sun Devil ticket office. The phone number is 480-965-2381, and you can stop by Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. You talked about their kicker, Brad Bond converting that field he uh, you know he, he's been a big part of their team in the past in terms of yielding points one game last year he was able to account for 18 points himself just with kicking the ball he is also their kickoff man he'll kick to Justin Taplin and Richard Williams as you look out there on your screen Taplin is the point man to your right Richard Williams is to the left And then it kind of hems him in and closes in on him at the 26. That's Jose Fuentes. I think Terrell Suggs might have taken a bite out of him the last time he hit him and knocked him down. A little blood there on his shirt. And you can imagine how hard he must have been hit. Many times Fuentes quarterbacks have chin straps on to protect their chin. But you can see him turning around there and suddenly Suggs was in his face. And that's not the first time that he was knocked down tonight. It's not as though, as I said earlier in the game, that sacks don't mean everything. It's the number of times that you can knock the quarterback down. They remember it in the fourth quarter, don't they? They sure do. Mike Williams runs right into the arms of Blake Eagle, who stops him after a short gain of about three yards. Blake Eagle is one of their best defensive players. He has 19 tackles and seven of them behind the line of scrimmage. We talked about Todd Heap earlier in the game being a complete player, not just a re receiver, but you can see the fine job he does there in keeping his legs moving and totally occupying Duncan that time, keeping him out of the play. And a lot of times it's not pancaking a guy on his back. It's a lot of times it's just getting him out of position so there's a running lane for the running back. Stephen Trejo in that split backfield now behind Cron on a second and six. That one went to Taplin or to Williams. It went between the two, and Brent Passy, another Valleyite, is back defending on the play for Utah State, and it brings up a third and six. Yeah, J Justin Taplin was complaining that he was held on the play. You'll see it was an inside route, and that was one ball that should not have been thrown. Taplin was not in a position to make a reception there. You can see it was perfectly defended on the inside. Sun Devils will go with three receivers. Heap is the tight end, and Trejo is the running back. There's that quick drop, and they can try to get Williams out there on the island, and there he goes again. He's going. He's going. He scores. Once he got open, he made sure that nobody was going to catch him from behind. And this has been his trademark. You can see him early getting the ball. Great block up there at the line of scrimmage. And then William, he did the rest. He just headed down the sideline. He realized where he was at, trying to give himself as much width on the field as he could before he had to make contact with any defenders downfield. But this is quick thinking and natural reaction. How about Kron's numbers right now? Two out of four for 172 yards and two touchdowns, and he's going to get relieved here in a few minutes. 
Barth hits the extra point. Three minutes and 33 seconds left to play in the first quarter that has seen a lot of fireworks out here, including the ones they shoot off after the touchdowns. And that was a great block by Sean McDonald, number 81, to spring Williams at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, it's reminiscent last year, there was a play that was very similar to that against UCLA, and Richard Williams in that situation threw two blocks for Delvon Flowers that made that play successful. But it's, it's not just making the catch and running the ball down the field. It's all your other players making great plays to put you in a position for the touchdown. 13 to three, Arizona State. That drive is a three-play drive, 73 yards, taking a minute and seven seconds. Actually, a minute and nine seconds. And Williams now with a couple of catches, 142 yards, and both of those catches are six. It's, it's impressive. The, the, the matchups on the outside, I think, certainly are in the favor of Arizona State. But Ron, I think, has done a great job in terms of not only his accuracy of his passes, but what he hasn't done. A lot of times, you talk about what quarterbacks do. A lot of times, you should look at what they don't do, specifically turning the ball over and throwing interceptions. White will run up and field this one on the four. Oh, what a great block there by Walker that got him another five or six yards out across the 20. Well, Jeff Cron came in with very respectable numbers, though nothing spectacular through his first two games. But you can add two to that touchdown figure and about 170 yards to the uh, 237 right now. That is impressive. Well, I think they're they're pleased with him because he doesn't try to force the ball too many times. He plays within the system. And I know he was looking at John Pettis down there talking with him on the sidelines. He loves his personality and composure. John Roberts replaces White at running back for the Aggies. On this, their third series, they run the counter. And he'll get five yards or thereabouts out close to the 30. I think this is an illustration of a team that's not panicking. Instead of just trying to throw the ball up, bombs, realizing coming back off this last touchdown, they're staying with their game plan. They they felt like they could run the ball against this Arizona State defense, and not necessarily in a pounding fashion. They're thinking that they could crack some openings because so many times this defense comes on blitzes, but a lot of times once you get past that first wave of defenders, it's wide open. Stallworth is the man in motion. Fuentes again is hit as he throws it and overthrows Aaron Jones. Eason again is defending. And up front, Kurt Wall delivers a blow. We get back to this quarterback pressure again. The snap was a little bit high from the center, but you'll see Fuentes get knocked down again. He's twisted and he's, he's hit on each and every play. And that time it looked like Jones was actually open. You'll see him coming downfield, avoiding Eason around the 35-yard line, and had that ball been thrown a little bit more accurately, I'm not so sure Jones wouldn't have been able to go the distance. You know, once again, it just seems like that the secondary that has made a lot of good plays, Doug, but they're, they're living a charmed life right now because every time those receivers get open, the quarterback doesn't get the ball to them or they drop it. There it is over the middle again, and another first down for Utah State. You don't have to kill the receiver downfield. The most important part when you're in the secondary or a linebacker is to make the tackle. And Adam Archuleta realized at that time, put himself in a position. See, he breaks down perfect position to make the tackle and wraps up. Doesn't try to just intimidate the receiver. Just make the sure tackle. Well, if I'm Utah State, I stay with that kind of stuff the rest of the night <laughs> because they got people open. And if you get five yards of pop, hey, you move the chains. Yeah, that in, those inside routes have been open thus far. The receivers take a beating, though, before it's all said and done. Here's a wide receiver screen to Jones. Wow, look at him through the somersault over there, taken off his feet by Eason. They came out tonight, they wanted to try to execute a few plays. Misdirection, trying to get this defense going in one direction and coming back, which we've seen them do. But Eason goes down on Jones, and it's not very often you'll see a, a, another player get airborne in that fashion. And credit Jones with holding on to the ball in this situation. He could have very easily lost that ball, but that was a tremendous tackle breaking on a receiver. Second and five, you see the shift put on now by Utah State. Fia Fia is the man in motion. And he may have been the intended receiver. However, that ball goes awry. Let me correct something here, too, as you get a look right there at Solomon Bates. Cron's numbers are 142 yards. They sent 172 up here to us from the stat booth, and it is 142. 
the correct numbers on him. So much of offensive passing is timing, and on that last play, Fuentes threw the ball to a spot, expecting the receiver to be there, but because of the pressure, he has to get rid of that ball quickly. Papinga is the man in motion. And the ball is complete, but stepping out of bounds over there is Sugaturaga, J.R. Sugaturaga, who's out of Fallbrook, California, and the Aggies will have to punt it. Yeah, that's one of those things. That could have gone for a first down had he been a little bit more cognizant of where he was on the field. And so much being a football player is realizing, especially once you get near the sideline, where you are. Yeah, you don't have eyes in the back of your head, but you, all, you almost have to be able to sense that. And the, the good receivers usually do. Ball's loose momentarily. And then McDonald falls on it after he muffs the punt and had one of his teammates knocked into him, and Arizona State will go to work on the 20. Yeah, you have to credit Utah State in that situation. They came down, and one of their bullets, so to speak, the guys coming from the end that are their responsibility to run downfield and make the tackle, he just pushed one of the Arizona State blockers right into the receiver that time and almost caused the fumble. Well, it'll be interesting if Cron continues to have this kind of success to see when the coaching staff at Arizona State decides to make the quarterback change. The Sun Devils are running the ball fairly well against Utah State, but the big play has been the pass play tonight so far. Williams gains about five right there, running right straight up the middle. That last play is a perfect example of, of anticipating or analyzing the momentum of the game. When you start looking at which direction the piles are going, you generally have a pretty good indication which team is ahead. That time, Williams just drove three or four defenders and fell forward. Ron's got great numbers in that interception to touchdown ratio now on the year, three to one. With three being the good number. Williams struggles but misses getting to the first down by about a yard and a half as Blake Eagle is dragged for a couple of yards on that play. One of the things that this Utah State defense has shown in the previous weeks is that they can be impacted by play action. So many times their linebackers and safeties were out of position. Now Arizona State hasn't done much tonight in terms of trying to get them in misdirection, just attacking the perimeter, which they've had a lot of success with, in particular with Williams. But they have exposed their secondary in one-on-one -on -one situations a couple of times tonight, Doug. As we saw earlier when Tony Walker could not bring down Richard Williams on that one touchdown play. Brent Passy stops Williams right there, but he gains the first down out to around the 32. And I've said this before, Bruce Snyder, he he loves the running game. When you look at the Pac-10, over the last five years, they've finished no lower than fourth in the Pac-10 running the ball. We have completed the first quarter, and it's been Richard Williams running down the sideline as he leads Arizona State to a 13-3 lead. I say, Leonardo, how's that painting color? Uh, it's a masterpiece. You're way ahead of its time. <laughs> we, we asked for something that would uplift the human spirit. What on earth is that? Exactly, uh, this is it. Uh, I am a genius. It's a drink called Red Bull. Red Bull? Uh, you call that a work of art? You must be mad. Uh, you will see. Someday everybody will be singing, Red Bull gives you a... That's it. I'm giving the chapel dog to Michelangelo. River Casinos, home to Arizona's hottest gaming action. Arizona's largest poker room at Wild Horse Pass still has this 2000 Mustang GT to give away. Entering is easy and free. Expect the best from the river. Gila River Casinos. It's Toyota's end-of-year clearance sale. There's never a better time to buy a car or truck. Every 2000 Toyota is priced to move. Plus, look for huge deals on remaining 2000 Forerunners and Tundras. But hurry, because Toyota's end-of-year clearance sale ends October 1st at Larry Miller, Wright, Scott, Superstition, Tempe, Bell Road, Big Two, and Camelback Toyota today. Two touchdown passes from Cron to Richard Williams, leading Arizona State to a 13-3 lead at the end of the first quarter. The 
statistics. Arizona State on top in that department as well. They haven't run the ball probably as well as they'd like, but look at those passing yards, Doug Plank. Uh, that's very impressive. And uh, we talked about before the game even began, Bruce Snyder trying to put a spark in this offense. Obviously, it's happened tonight. Sun Devils are going to need that. They're going to get a real angry UCLA team next week in Los Angeles as they open the season. The Bruins went up to Eugene, Oregon today and got thumped. And that crowd, did you watch any of that game today? Yeah, I sure did. And that Oregon, if, if you remember, I remember last time we did a game up there, Tom, that, uh, who was it? One of our players taunted their crowd. Campbell, I think yeah. it was. Steve Campbell. Campbell. The rest of the day, you couldn't hear anything in the press box, on the field. That is not the right place to, to try to antagonize the crowd. We caught a sh uh, shot of uh, Bruce Snyder on the sidelines. Of course, Bruce coached high school ball in Eugene. Look at this nifty open field running by Richard Williams. And a first down. That's the best ground gain play of the night for Arizona State. Tony Walker on the tackle, and the Sun Devils are now moving it on the ground as well as through the air. We've talked about Williams' ability to change directions and have great peripheral vision. You'll see him once. There we're going to see Todd Heap engage the block again. As I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a pancake block, but each and every time, he's Todd Heap, his block is at least allowed the running back to get past the line of scrimmage. What do you think? You think they'll run here with a two tight end set? Yeah, I think so. A couple of yards, maybe three to the 49. Jared Salasable on the tackle for Utah State. We have an all-name team here, by the way, for Utah <laughs> you, State. If you notice, to Tom, really I'm not really ones, you're going I'm to say a, their names. I'm not chipping in. <laughs> I, I will only talk about the guys, the Jones and the Smiths on this team. You can have the rest of them. Yeah, you go ahead and pronounce <laughs> There's Nick. Home. His name is Nick. Nick's doing a heck of a job tonight. <laughs> own idea if you're really wanting to get technical about it. At least that's what their radio guys told me. That's called knocking a little bit of the rust off right there. Williams just keeps hammering away. What is impressive about this, too, is it forces the defense to start bringing everybody up, the linebackers, the safeties. And you, we talked about setting up play action. It's, it's plays like this, cons consecutively running, running plays three or four times in a row, picking up positive yards. It puts your offense to really take advantage of the defense from a play action standpoint. Tom Pace was the running back on the last play for Arizona State. Got a chance for his first carry. He transferred in here after a Mormon mission out of Idaho University He's from Mesa originally. Now Stephen Trejo is the running back. Braun will throw to Trejo. I don't think he got the first down. He's about a yard short. What, why Bruce Snyder likes Jeff Cron is his thought-making process, his checkoff. He looked downfield and he went through his progression in terms of looking at receivers and finally hit the relief valve out the left-hand side. You'll see him looking downfield, scanning. He looked at two receivers downfield before he ended up dumping the ball off to Steven Trejo out in the flat. And Trejo knows what it feels like to hit people like that. He was a linebacker last year, and Jesse Busta comes up and prevents him from making the first down on a nice tackle. Mike Williams back in there to try to get him a yard as they go for it on fourth and one. Sun Devils are one of one on fourth downs this year. He won't make it. Boy, was that a nice play for Utah State by Nate Putman and Kate Smith. And I'm not so sure we might not even have an injury. It looks like Williams is down momentarily, but when you have a defense that's coming across the line of scrimmage that quickly, there, there was absolutely nowhere for him to go. Smith just drilled him right in the middle of the backfield, and he didn't even pick up another inch. After contact, just look at how he just moved straight backwards. That was... That was a tremendous effort by their defense in basically taking the running back high and low. Cade Smith the first one there, and Putnam finished him off, and the Aggies hold them at the 44 and take over first and 10. Emmett White has come back into the ballgame at running back for Utah State, and they line up in a two tight end set. has a great ability to break tackles, doesn't he? He's out across the 50 to the 49. Well, what he does, too, sometimes he hesitates when he's running the ball, and this gives the illusion to the defense that he's stopped. But in fact, he's not stopped. He's just trying to regain his balance for more yardage downfield. And on that last play, it appeared that they had, had him stopped, and he was surrounded by defenders. But at the last second, he gives a burst, and he seems to always be able to pick up a couple extra yards. 
Six yards on the carry. Technically, the ball is on the 49, but we'll call it the 50, and it is second down and four. Here they come again with that misdirection. And White struggles to within a yard of a first down. What was impressive there is he broke a tackle in the backfield, and then he turned the corner, and he somehow managed to pick up yardage for what appeared to be a play that was going nowhere, but it was because of his effort. Emmett White was able to make that play happen on his own individual effort. You see the figures right there. He's averaging five yards a carry. That's about a yard and a half under his average. Quincy Yancey was on the tackle for Arizona State, and it's third and a yard now for Utah State. They have it at the Arizona State 47. Intercepted. And this is going to be a touchdown. Terrell Sucks, his first of his career. Adam Archuleta got to the quarterback, and Suggs did the rest. This was a play that they ran earlier. You knew they were going to be coming back to it. Any offensive coordinator that has success with a play is going to be coming back to it. And Phil Snow, I guarantee you've got Adam Archuleta, who's coming off from the corner. Look at him. He doesn't even take that fake. He knows that the quarterback, Quintus, is going to hold on, forces a bad throw, and Suggs is there, and he brought back some of his high school memories, chugging that ball down the field. That he didn't waste any time getting out of the end zone. 48 yards on the return for number 48. You saw him. Bruce Snyder talking to Dick Arbuckle for a moment along the sideline. I thought maybe they might be thinking about going for two here. But Barth will kick the extra point, and we're going to get a flag. And it's a good thing we get the flag right here because he missed it. And if Arizona State is detected, although if it's a false start, they have to kick it again with a five-yard penalty. And this is something that is not good for the defense. Dead ball. False start on the offense. This Five is, yards. This is Replay actually down. a penalty on the defense here because Arizona State gets the false start and misses the extra point, and the defense can't take the play. It, it seems as though in the future that this is something that probably should be addressed because the defense did nothing wrong, yet the offense still retains possession of the ball and has an opportunity to kick it one more time. There's actually no play because the whistle blows before the snap, so Barth backs up five yards and knocks it through again. 11-01 left here in the first half. There is a penalty flag down, however, so let's... Actually, there are two. Let's wait a minute here and get this one sorted out. Utah State was offside. Arizona State will decline the penalty. There was also a personal foul, which I believe that they will put in on the kickoff. But let's see here. Let's get the explanation, although... Referee Chuck McFerrin is discussing this right now. And oh. there you saw the personal foul right there. It sure was, middle of the screen. It's pretty hard to hide when you're that big. <laughs> it's hard to Offside, punch somebody. On the defense, that penalty is declined. PAT is good. Yeah, Jason After Moore. the kick, dead ball, personal foul on the defense. That 15 yards will be assessed on the kickoff. And that means that we have a 20 to 3 score for Arizona State as Terrell Suggs gets his first touchdown as a collegiate. White and Aaron Jones are the wide receivers. White takes the pass, gets a block from Jones, and gets a first down to the Arizona State 49. Archuleta has been all over the field tonight. He has play made plays in the middle, he's rushed the quarterback, and he runs the running back down on a screen pass outside. <laughs> that is so impressive having a linebacker. Look, he lines up basically over top of the guard. And when that ball is thrown to the outside with White, he's able to make that tackle from behind. That was a tremendous effort and also recognition of the play. Once he realized where Fuentes was going with the ball, he wasted no time getting over there to make the tackle. First and 10 Aggies at the Arizona State 49. White almost runs into a blocker. Just avoided him and gained about two yards. Nigel Eason makes the tackle. I don't know how many times I've heard coaches say, too, 
Adam Archuleta just goes to show you how smart coaches are because nobody <laughs> recruited him. You know, it's incredible. Every coach that we've ever talked to on the opposite opposing team coming in, they just can't believe that this kid was a walk-on at Arizona State. He's so much fun to watch. They said on film because he's the one guy that's always flying around making something happen, as he did on Suggs' interception return. And he could very well be the Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year this year. Stallworth is the man in motion. And that ball is not quite in the reach of Stallworth as he goes down about six yards and hooks back. Eric Fields is defending, and there was a little heat on Fuentes right then. He did have time to throw it, and it should have been a better throw. Yeah, you see Phil Snow, defense coordinator, hollering out some instructions to his squad, but he's had these guys motivated this year, and they've come out ready to play on the, on the games that they've had thus far, but you can see he never stops. He loves being down the sidelines, communicating with those players throughout the game. Aggies are two out of seven now on third downs. This is a third down and nine call at the Arizona State 48. Fuentes finds the man open. And Stallworth gets it to the 35 of Arizona State in the arms of Neeson and Eric Fields, of Eason, I should say, and it's first and ten. You can see the Fuentes, he's starting to realize that he needs to try to move out of that pocket. You'll see settles back in the pocket initially and then starts breaking to his right. And he does have a throwing lane that time. The, the Sun Devils didn't put that much pressure on him. And, and credit their receiving core. They actually sat down in between some of the defenders that time and uh, made a nice play on the ball. First and 10, Utah State. They have managed a field goal and have given up two offensive and one defensive touchdown tonight. Nice hole for White. And another first down inside the 25. He wastes no time getting through the hole when he sees a crack in there and a place to run. Yeah, I talked about misdirection. That time, they're always anticipating the quarterback is going to be keeping the ball on a pass. And that time, I think the de defense almost anticipated this was going to be a fake. Suddenly realized that White had the ball. You can see Adam Archuleta come up the middle, but he was out of position to make a tackle. You'll see he's coming quickly through a quick, easy seam. But White was already breaking to the outside and able to pick up those yards. Joe Solosibel comes into the ball game at the fullback position now for Utah State. This time, White is unable to get around the corner. Wilson and Eason are both there, and White is a little slow to get up and is going to limp a bit as he goes back to the huddle, as you can see. I am really impressed with these defensive back, backs, though, from Arizona State. Instead of just being cover guys, when they realize they are in a position to make a tackle, watch this play. These guys close on the ball. Look at Eason. Look at the effort that he makes just sticking his shoulder right into the legs of White and went down immediately. And I'm not so sure White might, might not be hurt on that play as, as he gingerly went to the sideline, but they are beating the offenders up especially in tonight's game. What is it they say? Arrive at the ball, a bunch of them in an angry move. John Roberts replaces him at running back. And Fuentes has to call his second timeout of the first half. At 7.32, left to play till halftime. Arizona State has been in control since early in the ball game. Thanks to Richard Williams, mainly. Are you ready? Hey, number 18. Peyton Manning? Hello. Archie Manning's son? This guy eats, sleeps, and drinks football. He's like, study, practice, study, practice. From the Volunteer State is right. Volunteer to kick some defensive butt. Yeah! And... No, let me guess. He drinks my stuff, huh? Booyah! Gatorade. Battle-tested, champion approved. But well, we're not gonna finish? Come on, Mike. You can win this hole! We loved our first Elantra so much, we went out just a week later and bought ourselves a second one. The Elantra offers plenty of safety features. Airbags, lots of room for our car seats, kids, toys. It gives excellent gas mileage. It's a great family car. The warranty for this in America. It's nice to know that I won't have to put more money into my car as I'm still paying for it. 
Get as low as 3.9% APR financing on the Elantra at your Hyundai dealer now. ASU's men's and women's basketball season tickets are on sale now at the Sun Devil Ticket Office. Call the Sun Devil Ticket Office, 480-965-2381, or stop by Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sun Devil basketball, be a part of the home team. Roberts remains in the ballgame in place of Emmett White at running back on this second and nine. Aggies at the Arizona State 24. Fuentes wanting to throw back to the other side and overthrows the intended receiver. That was Casey Papinga. That was in, in particular, that was a very dangerous throw because he had to throw it over top of the defender. That time Solomon Bates looked like he was in perfect position. And Fuentes had to loft the ball over top of the defender. I talked about misdirection, him trying to get players out of position. Aaron Jones down at the top of the screen was actually coming across the middle of the field, but he was also very well covered by Williams on that play. Third and nine at the 24. Solosable lines up in the backfield along with Roberts. Roberts on the reception and gets it inside the 20, and it looks like Utah State is going to have to attempt another field goal here as Terrell Suggs refuses to let him go. Well, it's surprising that they came back and basically ran the same play that Suggs picked the interception off, and that play was very well defense to it. Utah State is not a very high potent offense. They've only scored six points in the first half thus far this season. But they have been a good second half team, at least they were last week. Brad Bond from 36 yards out off the right side hash mark. Two for two, and he makes it a 20 to six ball game. Arizona State with the lead here in the second period. It has been completely redesigned. So it is more powerful. Safer, quieter, and more spacious. With ultra low emissions and improved fuel economy. Introducing the all new Civic from Honda. Amazing but true. Why can't they park in the garage like everyone else? Take me to the river where the jackpots flow. Take me to the river where the winners go. Take me to Gila River Casino where the winners go. Go to the river, Gila River Casinos. Go to the river, Gila River Casinos. The Suzuki Summer Sale at Bell Road Suzuki. So stop by this weekend and get great deals on all our Suzuki models. Like this loaded V6 Suzuki Grand Vitara for only $16,854 with APR as low as 0.9%. Or maybe this nicely equipped four-door Vitara for only $15,436 with APR as low as 0.9%. Get in this Suzuki Swift for only $7,802. Bell Road Suzuki on 11th Avenue and Bell Road. Sun Devils by 14. Bruce Schneider had some thoughts this week about getting Ryan Keeley back into the lineup. Sincerity, accountability, responsibility issues, not health and not playing. I mean, and, um, and I don't know whether I should get off into this, but I've been accused on some that it's a win motive. It is not. It's, this young person did what I asked him to do. And he did it in aces. Um, I think he's making a change in his life. I promised his family five years ago that I'd do my level best to help all my players, and including him. The ball will be fumbled by Richard Williams at the five-yard line. And sometimes that can be a good thing. And it may be. They just can't stop him tonight, can they? All the way back across the midfield strike. 
Richard Williams is having a Hall of Fame night. I was thinking exactly the same thing you just said, Tom. Sometimes fumbling the ball gives the cover team a sense of, of, of like relief that, all, that there's not going to be any return, but not in the case of Richard Williams. Not only did he make wise decisions in terms of cutting, he also broke a number of tackles on that play. Ryan Keeley steps into the Arizona State huddle. And the reaction from the crowd, I'd say mostly positive, though somewhat mixed. Mike Williams is the running back. Keeley's first throw is caught down around the 40-yard line by Ryan Denard. And that's interesting because that's the second catch of the season for Denard, and Keeley picks him right out right away. <laughs> that, that's surprising. It's like, like two new guys coming in, to, and, and all of a sudden at the same time. But Keeley wasted no time. Once he set up back in the pocket, he found Denard open on a quick slant route. Second and two at the 40. Williams for first down yardage to the 30 of Utah State. Nick, on idea on the tackle for Utah State. Well, Bruce Snyder talked about the chemistry in the huddle this week, and he was hoping that the injection of Ryan Keeley into the offensive huddle was not going to be disruptive. Now, it's a strange thing when you go back in the huddle after each and every play and you look around, you want to see familiar faces that are back there. And, and Bruce was somewhat concerned about that because he had been working with the first unit. But based on these first two plays, it looks like it's going very well. Tom Pace has come into the ball game. Trejo is the running back right now. Trejo with a big hole right side for 10 or 11 more. Adejimo on the tackle for Utah State, and the Sun Devils are just blowing them off the line of scrimmage right now. What's fun about watching Steven Trejo, as you said earlier, Tom, he used to be a linebacker last season. When he gets the ball, he is looking for somebody to run into. Although he does run through the line of scrimmage here with a big hole, you can see the kind of determination and demeanor he has once he gets into that secondary. At the 19, it's first and 10. Keeley pumps it and throws it back to the near side. Denard inside the 14 as Jamar Glasper makes the tackle. On that last play, too, I think uh, Trejo might have been yelling or thinking at Donnie O'Neill, go ahead and make the block instead of just standing up there in front of me, right? <laughs> Ryan Keeley was looking in all directions. We had no idea where he was going, but this must have been a package deal with him and Denard coming in. If Keeley came in a game, he must have to throw to Denard on most of these pass routes. So Denard has twice as many catches tonight as he's had all season. Arizona State with a second down and five. Williams will be knocked down right on the 10. Especially when you're on defense, too, and they make a change at the quarterback position, it's amazing how you can feel the difference. Blake Eagle was the, making the tackle on that last play. But when, from a defensive standpoint, you, you feel this momentum shift when they make a change at the quarterback position. And that's not that any, Jeff Cron has done anything incorrect or wrong tonight. In fact, he's played superbly in terms of his passes. But you know, sometimes just bringing somebody else in, it just brings a different chemistry to the field. Third and a yard. Keeley to throw again. Dropped in the end zone by Todd Heath. Jamar Glasper may have gotten a hand on it. That is a ball that should not have been thrown. In spite of it being Todd Heath, the, the superb tight end, all Pac-10. He still was double covered that time. You'll see the safety come over from the inside, and the corner also was able to make a break on the ball and deflect the ball away. But that is a very dangerous route to throw at this area of the field. So Mike Barth, who won the ball game against Colorado State last Saturday night with a field goal, will try one from about 27 yards away. And once again, he is perfect. Keeley drives him to a score on his first possession since suffering the knee injury against the University of Arizona last November. I think Ryan's still been pretty impressive on that drive considering the limited amount of practice time that he's had. You talked about it earlier, Tom, the fact that you, you can, going through practice simulation is one thing, being in a game situation is totally different. But I think it's a statement by 
Bruce Snyder that he felt that Ryan Keeley had done everything that he had asked of him during this probation period and that he deserved an opportunity to be put back in the game. Seven plays, 38 yards, three minutes and two seconds on the drive. And Doug, the other thing, too, it sure helps when guys are getting 10 yards every time you hand the ball to <laughs> It makes it a little bit nicer at the quarterback position knowing that one thing that you can do and still have success is turn around and hand the ball off to somebody that's going to pick up at least three or four yards on each of those carries. And I talked about it before. When you can successfully run on a defense, they, they start getting their linebackers and safeties involved in run support, which opens up the passing game. Aggies have Walker and White back deep as Barth will kick off. You see the time remaining to be played here in the first half. Barth has put a couple of them into the end zone. That one fielded right on the goal line. And I tell you, Walker tonight a couple of times when he's gotten his hands on the ball has not been able to stay on his feet. He falls down right there. He is not tackled. And he gives Utah State the football out across the 25. See, now that's a striking graphic right there. We're yeah. looking at Arizona State here with only seven minutes and 21 seconds of possession of time. You would think that the, this game would be going the other way to Utah State, but it's been big plays, just what Bruce Snyder wanted. And a big lead by 17 points. Fuentes throws the pass to the near side. They did not set up the screen. And here goes White, and he's got one man to beat. unusual he was downfield further than the blockers were it was not a screen and it is a big play for Utah State this play was successful because of the execution of the quarterback it was misdirection initially he influenced the defense then came back with a very accurate throw and give some credit to their receivers downfield especially number 15 Chris Stallworth I believe got a block on one of the defenders for the Sun Devils coming over deep downfield and prevented him from making the tackle, but White realized that he had an open area straight down the sideline. You can see was, he just bumped Neeson, Neeson knocking him off course. Extra point by Bond is good. Yeah, I saw that block thrown right in the middle of the field as the uh, play was developing, and uh, it's another one of those ones you were talking about, Doug, that it wasn't one that knocked Nigel Neeson off his feet. And yeah, maybe we'll get a chance to see this right here, but it sure knocked him away from his angle toward the ball carry. Yeah, they're trying to influence the Sun Devil defense to go over here to the left-hand side. And then once the ball is snapped, Fuentes, he understands. You can see him actually pull the defense to the left and then throw back. And that's exactly what they were successful in doing. You can see all the defenders from Arizona State over on that left side. And we won't get a chance to see Eason just get bumped by Stallworth coming across the field, which allowed White to make that successful run down the sideline. How, how many games has it been since you've seen three 70-yard touchdown passes thrown in the first half of one game? Uh, we, we would never have anticipated, based on what the Sun Devils offense was doing coming into tonight's game, as well as the inefficiencies of this Utah State, with the exception of the half that they had against Southern Utah, They've struggled on offense also, but, you know, we looked at that time of possession. They're running the ball and having some success. They're just not having the big plays except for that last one. Utah State is going to get the football as they recover the kick. Desmond Watson covers the football at the Arizona State 37. Don't count the Aggies out just yet. Watson is one of their stars on special teams. He plays almost every single special teams. This appeared to be almost a pitching wedge in terms of golf terminology, but look at the effort. He was getting knocked around, but Watson somehow was able to hold on to that ball despite the contact with two Arizona, Arizona State players and come down with possession. I remember during the Arizona State's Rose Bowl run under John Cooper, they used that deep onside kick a lot. And what you do is you kick it to an open spot of the field and then send all your folks down there to get to it. Here goes Emmett White, and he gets hit right in the mouth as he gets to the 35 by Alfred Williams and Patrick Wilson and picks up 
just about two yards, and he really paid for those two. Yeah, he sure did. When you watch the mechanics of this handoff in the backfield, you almost get the impression that Fuentes is setting something up. Look at him, you know, making very dramatic the handoff to White coming through the middle. And I'm sure they're checking each and every time that defender, defender on the back side of this defense, whether he's containing or flattening out and running down the line of scrimmage. Second and eight at the Arizona State 35. Looks like the Sun Devils might blitz Fuentes from his right. Here they come, and they run away from it, and the Sun Devils are there, too. Archuleta again. Who else? All over the field. Adam Archuleta, when he commits to a play, there is absolutely no stopping. You can see the acceleration that he has. There is no way that an offensive lineman is going to be able to block him. You, you notice the quick steps that he has, the abbreviated motions. And when he makes up his mind that it's a running play, he gets across that line of scrimmage so fast. Talked about it before. Last year, he led the Pac-10 in tackles for a loss. Third and 10, Utah State, right in the middle of the field between the hash marks at the Arizona State 37. Fuentes from the gun to buy a little more time. He didn't buy enough. He's down at the 45, the sack by Kurt Wallop, the second of the night for Arizona State. He was waiting for a route to open downfield, and he actually had a wide receiver open down the field on a flag pattern. He took it to the inside, and you'll see up here at the very top of the screen coming out, but he just didn't have enough time back in the pocket. It was a very nice pattern that was run. They influenced the safety. He bit to the inside, then he took it outside, but you need time and protection to execute that play. The Sun Devils have stopped the clock to conserve as much as they can of that minute and 27 seconds remaining, anticipating a punt right now. And they're going to add another five seconds back to the clock and put it at a minute 32 as they anticipate the punt here from Utah State. Now, Steve Mullins, who is another player out of the Arizona, he played in Phoenix in high school, a sophomore, has only knocked one punt dead this year inside the 20. Surprising, too, because they've had plenty of opportunities to punt, especially in that Texas Tech game earlier. But this defense, although they overreacted on that previous play for the long ball for the touchdown, the Sun Devils have still yet to give up a rushing touchdown as far as their defense is concerned but one thing's when things are going your your way sometimes there's a tendency to want to overreact ASU has nobody back to receive the punt and Mullins rolls it inside the 10 and into the end zone so he has still got one inside the 20 and the Sun Devils will take over on the 20. And with Keeley at the controls, I like their chances with a minute 24 to go in the half and two timeouts left. Yeah, I do too. And, and Mullins, you know, he's basically a long kicker. He's had four plus punts this year over 50 yards. He's already had a 64 yarder and 82 yarder. So he, he just doesn't know how to make it that short game going. He's, he's not doing, executing very well, especially trying to place the ball inside the 20. But he's a boomer out in the middle of the field. Steven Trejo is the running back. Arizona State goes with three wide receivers to the right. Keeley almost has that one intercepted. He hit Blake Eagle right in the hands with it, and that's a bad spot to hit a linebacker with the football. <laughs> that's why they play on defense. When you, when you start dropping like a few feet. <laughs> that's right. You go, son, you need to be on the defensive side of the ball. And especially, you know, a lot of these times linebackers, they're taping up their arms and hands and you know, they're just not usually in a position. But John Pettis, we're getting a chance to see him on the sideline. This is another ball that Ryan Keeley should not have thrown. Blake Eagle, a senior, has never intercepted a pass at Utah State. Second and ten. Three-man rush. That one was deflected and is caught. And out of bounds near midfield is Sean McDonald. And Arizona State is in business in Utah State territory at the 48. That, that was another flirting with danger. Ryan Keeley threw that ball, basically threw a defender who was in position to make the interception. This ball should have either been lofted or wait for the receiver to clear the linebacker. But you'll see the deflection actually helped McDonald make the catch. You'll see the ball deflected the left-hand side. Sean McDonald coming across the field was perfect stride to catch that ball. Was that a linebacker that ball hit? It was. It was Cade Smith. 
First and ten. Keeley is going to get sacked for the first time, and he really got hammered. Brent Passy, the third of those three linebackers. They call their linebackers Hero, Mike, and Mac. Mac dropped the pass. Smith deflected one, and Passy just buries Keeley back on the 40. Yeah, Ryan Keeley needs to be able to go ahead and get rid of that ball, recognize pressure. Yeah, Jesse Busta, like you said, he's the only guy that has an interce uh, interception on this defense, but you'll see Williams down there on the sideline wide open. He has to recognize quicker when the blitz is coming from the defensive side of the ball and find that open receiver. Sunday will spend their second timeout. You see the time remaining. A 10 point lead for Arizona State against a team that last two weeks ago against Southern Utah came back and scored a bunch in the second half. Southern Utah, of course, is not Arizona State. Right, they sure did. But give this offense some credit, though. Once they started rolling last week, they started putting some points on the board. And there's nothing like getting a couple touchdowns to start building confidence. And I can assure you that this team right now feels a lot better about itself after after that last touchdown than they did earlier in the game. Craig Paulson, you see there, is their defensive coordinator. And he also coaches the linebackers, and maybe next week they'll have a little passing drill for them. Oh. As I said, hey, this, they're playing well. this defense only has one interception, and uh, you're right, they've dropped a couple opportunities tonight. Second and 22. Keeley just missed Todd Heath. Third down. It looked like Ryan threw that ball just a little too early. Todd Heap was breaking free downfield. You'll see he really didn't get much of a jam downfield, but he actually put a nice move on one of the defenders around the 35-yard line. And when he turned around, that's a timing route. Both the receiver and the quarterback have to understand where that ball is going to be thrown. But it may be because Heap was tied up a little bit with the defender. It took him too long to come out of that break. Sun Devils with a reasonably good third down percentage. Let's see if they can convert this one. He tried to one hand that one. No penalty flag. It's fourth down. And now Utah State's got a shot. They've got one timeout left, and they're going to have it with about 40 seconds to go. They certainly do, and you can see a lot of frustration on Bruce Snyder. He's actually grabbing his jersey as though Todd Heap was grabbed. And there was some contact made downfield, but there was just basically contact the ball wasn't thrown you're allowed to do that in college you can make contact with the receiver as long as the ball is not in the air while you're making that contact Tony Walker is deep that's the difference between the NFL and college football five yards downfield it's called an illegal chuck or illegal contact there's another one of those one hop fields off the uh, turf by Murphy Walker fair catches it inside the 15. And uh, the uh, receivers can also block downfield like that, too. They certainly can. And one thing is, usually this Utah State team, I know that in talking with their head coach, they really want to try to upgrade their effort on special teams. They have decent returners as far as kickoff and punt. But, you know, make complete special teams play, and especially until their offense starts becoming a lot more proficient. They're, they're looking for their special teams to be that added mix. But I think Bruce Snyder is just wondering tonight you know did he make the right decision with regard to the quarterbacks and ryan certainly had a couple of good plays but he's made some bad decisions also emmett white the running back will get the call yeah. utah state may be content to go to the locker room down by 10 and not take a chance of turning it over and giving arizona state more opportunities for points right here and i think they're going to let the clock run asu could stop it they've got one timeout remaining so does Utah State. They may take one more snap, but they have put the ball in play with less than 25 seconds to go in the, in the half. So they don't have to snap it. They will. And White is stopped short of the line of scrimmage by Eric Fields. First half is over. It's been a half of big plays. Three passing plays of better than 70 yards, including this one, a 74-yard pass play from Fuentes to White. ASU by 10 at halftime. I know Bruce Snyder has had the opportunity to coach against another team that he coached, uh, the University of California. He does every year, but he also was at Utah State. We mentioned that at the top of our broadcast. You see Bruce... He led them to two conference championships, though he did not gain a 
500 record as a head coach, but he certainly turned their fortunes around and had some good folks there like Eric Hipple and others. And he left them to go to the uh, Rams and then got back into college coaching. Mick Dennehy is now down on the sideline with Mike Jarecki. Mike? Coach, your team trails by 10 at the half. You've been victimized with a big play. What are you going to do differently here in the second half? Well, two things. not Either not give up the big play or make some big plays ourselves. I mean, that's the difference in the ball game. Two long scores by their offense, and you know, our quarterback gets rushed, and, and uh, they make a big play on defense. And uh, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of difference sometimes between uh, winning and losing, and uh, we haven't helped ourselves on three plays. I'm pretty happy. The kids are playing pretty well, but we've got to play better. Okay, good luck in the second half, Coach. Send it back up to you, Tom. Thanks, Mike. And uh, we'll see Justin Taplin and Richard Williams back deep for Arizona State as we get the second half underway here in front of a, a smallish gathering at Sun Devil Stadium. They're going to try that blue kick again, and this time Arizona State will field it. One of the guys up front on the hands team makes the catch, and now... You know, there's one way of looking at that. There's another way of looking at that. If it's successful, you're okay because you get the ball. If it's not, the other guys have excellent field position. And especially in that situation, there were a number of Arizona State players in that area. I, I can't understand the strategy or the logic of trying that kick again. You're not, you're not surprising anybody. They're anticipating it. Jeff Cron will start the second half at quarterback. He threw two touchdown passes in the first quarter. Richard Williams takes tacklers with him for about three out to the 39. Incidentally, you can credit Ben Fox with grabbing that blue kick. Solosable makes the tackle, and you look at the numbers on Cron. Tell you what, 60% completions and two touchdowns, that ain't too that, shabby. That is so impressive. Three completions, two touchdowns, and these were not the little dink touchdowns. These were long bombs down the sideline. Ryan Keeley on the sideline will be helping flash plays in to his teammate. Oh, there's another one. This is McDonald, or rather Donnie O'Neill. And the Sun Devils score again. Donnie O'Neill had the first receiving touchdown for this team earlier against San Diego State. But he basically came down and just ran a simple post pattern. And this secondary has fallen victim to plays like this in the previous two games. Their, their quarterbacks and their safeties a lot of times overreact or don't do a very good job of reading the ball when it's in the air. But Cron waited for O'Neill to get open in the middle of the field, perfectly led him with that strike. 61 yards on that one. So much for big plays. Look at the line, too. The line gave him a throwing lane. When we got a chance to see that replay, you'll see there was a five or six yard area in the very middle of the field, allowing Jeff Cron to find that receiver. Sun Devils will not go for two, but we'll have Barth come out for another extra point, which is good. A 51 second strike for Arizona State. They go two plays in 64 yards. And who do you start against UCLA next week if you're the quarterback's coach? What made that so work so well was the patience that Jeff Cron showed that time. Instead of quickly throwing the ball, I talked about the throwing lane here. Look in the very middle of the field. His linemen give him the opportunity to throw that ball without somebody in his face. And he held the ball for O'Neill to break free down the middle of the field and threw a perfect strike. So we'll see now whether Utah State is able to get uh, any kind of a big play drive going here as they give up another big play defensively. Cron, four out of six, 206 yards, three touchdowns, and he has pass receptions or completions of 61, 72, and 70 yards on three of those four. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. And, and what is great about this, I think a little bit of competition is great for any position, and especially at the quarterback position. And I think Jeff Cron has really responded tonight. He's been very focused, and as, as far as his physical skills are concerned, he's been right on target. Aaron Jones and Tony Walker are the deep man for Utah State. Walker at the one. Stumbled again and almost lost his balance and didn't get it to the 20. 
And even though we were told that Scott Peters was out for the game, I understand he was out there snapping on the last two plays. Mark Aguirre on the tackle on special teams for Arizona State as Utah State now down 30 to 13 goes to work for the first time offensively in the second half. When you're on a kickoff team, number one, you'd like to kick the ball out of the end zone, but if that isn't the case and a team, re team is going to return it, the goal of the kickoff team is to try to make a tackle inside the 20 yard line. And with that tackle made down there in the 19 yard line, I'm sure that Bruce Snyder has to feel happy about that last effort. Emmett White will get the start in the second half at running back. And Fuentes will put it in the air for the first time. And he's trying to get a big play to Jones, who's tied up on front of the Utah State bench by Kenny Williams, and the pass is incomplete. Arizona State has come out and said, we are going to challenge you one-on-one -on -one down the sidelines. And this time, Kenny Williams, look, he's just man-to-man -man with Jones the entire way. And you can see Jones actually trying to push off if anything, that was offensive pass interference, but these corners all season long have made these plays. Second and 10. Williams comes over and gets one-on-one -on -one again with Aaron Jones at the bottom of the picture. And White is going to be, get tackled after he gains about two out to the 21 or 20, 20 or 21 yard line by Eric Fields. White had nowhere to go. That time, the Arizona State defense was forcing up on the perimeter. Brian Montesano actually was the first person to make contact. White was able to slip through that and stumble for a couple yards. But it's hard to run slow developing plays against an aggressive defense. You see Phil Snow continuing instructions from the sideline. And as I said, he's a motivator. He's always on these guys throughout the course of the game. Third and eight. Stallworth in motion. Fuentes will run, and he will be stopped short of the first down. And he really got blistered, and he may have dropped the ball on the ground, but I believe Utah State has recovered. Solomon Bates, what an impact player. We saw him twice at the San Diego State game strip running backs of the ball when they came through. This time, when you have a quarterback running the ball, this is like dessert after dinner. Solomon Bates came up and almost broke him like a pretzel. Impact, that's a pretty good word. Collision is another one. Yeah, when you see a quarterback running with the ball, all of a sudden you can see the ball actually stripped before Bates even made contact with it. Looked like Tommy Townsend actually was able to get his arm in there, strip that ball loose, but quarterbacks generally are not accustomed to running the ball, especially in the interior part of the line. Junior Putatau, who is the starting center for Utah State, is the injured player. Not real tall, but I guess you could call him a wide body at 6'1", 300. Or he got Buster. knocked down way back yeah. behind the play. He's a tough guy. They really like his toughness and very aggressive. And you watch him on film, he's, he's, he really maintains his blocks very well. Steve Mullins will punt. Sean McDonald back deep. Mullins gets away another beauty. McDonald caught it inside the 20 and he was running backwards when he did and he's tackled for a four yard loss by Sean Healy. 12.39 left, Jeff Cron throws his third touchdown pass, second down and eight. Trejo was the fullback. The pass is complete to Jason Moore who drags folks across the 25 and out of bounds near the first down marker. Ryan Duncan makes the stop. Jason Moore, more known for his blocking than his pass receiving. You just have to love tight ends. So tight ends are always open. They're always in a situation to make plays. But it looks like his knee was down when he first made contact with this ball. And it, it was. was. <laughs> That's the beauty of no replay. If you get up very quickly, that's true with even catches. A lot of times, if you get up like you made the catch, even though you dropped it on the turf, many times, depending on the official's angle, you can get away with that. You also saw a good shot of the referee keeping an eye on the quarterback and not in position to see the play, although that's really not his call. Richard Williams gets stopped and fumbles it on the 29. Utah State has says they have the football. And they do. Utah State was all over this play. As soon as that ball was thrown out there, that defense was anticipating this very same play. 
and you can see the reaction there. Williams had nowhere to go. In fact, he should have tucked. You can see the initial defender came by, looks like Glasper, and stripped the ball loose. Williams looking downfield, trying to find a running lane, didn't realize that he was under such duress and contact with the defenders. Blake Eagles' first fumble recovery of the year, and it gives Utah State an opportunity to get back into it again. First and 10 at the Arizona State 29. White on that misdirection play, out of bounds inside the 25. As on that play, White lines up as a wing back, takes the handoff and sweeps to his right. Late, a flag comes down after he's hit out of bounds. Yeah, there's gonna be some yards tacked on. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Half the distance to the goal, first down. This is a play that Utah State has run before. They run white in motion. They try to give him the advantage coming across the back of the backfield. And credit their offense that time. They got some great blocking over there on that top side of the screen in allowing White to get downfield. And then, of course, the penalty out of bounds, which is going to just add to the game. Adam Archuleta, who is sometimes known to play even beyond the sidelines, <laughs> I think is the guy who was guilty on that infraction. And in the penalty puts the ball down on the Arizona State 11. Utah State from the shotgun. Stallworth is in motion. Flags. There was definitely movement on the offensive